So you've decided you're going on that yoga retreat. How exciting! If you've never been on one before and have no idea what to pack, you're in the right place. I'll show you the ultra minimalist way to begin, but I'll also show you some of the extra things you may want to consider for the not so minimal or maybe minimal enough way. The things that could make you just that little bit more comfy. And stick around to the end because I'm headed to a five day silent retreat. So I'll also show you what I'm bringing with me and take you through the things that you may want to consider bringing on yours. So even if you're an old pro at yoga retreats, Keep watching because there could be something in here for you. Hi, I'm Jamie Tan at Enlightened Spoon, feeding your mind, body, soul. On this channel, we help you design a life with less stress and more intention. We're all about mindful living, lifestyle design, and finding the personal rituals that work for you. Before we begin packing, let's consider where you're going and what the focus of your retreat is. That means things like the climate. Is it by the beach in summer or in the mountains in winter? The number of days you're gone for, which will determine how many outfits you'll need. But that's also tied into the laundry situation. I've been in places in India where they have no washing machines and everything is hand washed, or rather scrubbed and beaten against those old school scrubbing boards. It's a bit rough on the clothes, so in that case, you don't want to bring your expensive new Lululemons with you. Where is the retreat happening? For example, in a studio setting that has its own yoga gear, or a Hyatt space like in a hotel ballroom, so maybe you'll need to bring all your own stuff. What kind of retreat is this? A relaxing sun and surf one with other outdoor activities, or a more austere ashram with no comforts nor luxuries. So you see how I could probably make a ton of videos on this topic alone, depending on where you're going and what the focus of your retreat is. In fact, if you've got a request, let me know in the comments below. I've done them all, from the super deluxe Ayurveda resort to the simple ashram experience. And no matter what kind of retreat you're going on, for me, these are the must-haves to pack. Clothes, of course, which is gonna consist mainly of your yoga gear, shoes, PJs, not needed if you're in a single room, but especially if you're sharing a room, consider your roommates. A notebook, pen, and journal. The whole point of any retreat is to have an element of turning inwards. And even if you're doing a more active retreat, some form of reflection, writing down your thoughts, or processing your retreat experience can be helpful. A yoga mat. Most retreat centers will have mats available, so you could probably just borrow one without lugging your own. But to be honest, you have no idea the state of their mats, and in these times, it's probably better for your health to bring your own. If lack of space in your luggage is a consideration, I have another option I'll show you later, so stick around for that. A swimsuit and flip-flops. Now, this might be particular only to me, but no matter where I go in the world, whether it's for work, play, and even in the winter, I bring a swimsuit and flip-flops. Because most health resorts or hotels have saunas or steam rooms, and I am a sucker for a good steam room every day if I could have it my way. Especially if you're sharing bathrooms, you'll want to bring flip-flops. And anyway, a swimsuit and flip-flops are small and they don't take up much space, so why not? A water bottle. Gotta stay hydrated. It's handy to have your own water bottle when you're traveling in general. It cuts down on plastic use too for bottled water. Most retreats these days offer some kind of filtered water option where you can fill your own bottle. For me, I like to also bring my own thermos because I drink slowly and I hate it when my coffee or tea is cold by my third sip. I mean, a thermos is optional, but a water bottle is a must. Next on my list of things you maybe want to bring, because we're all different and prefer things different ways, so some things to consider. Toiletries. If you're going somewhere higher end, they may provide nice toiletries, so you'll be okay. But if you're packing really light, you could technically skip these or just bring one moisturizer to use on your face and body, like this one from Waleda, and one soap to use on face and body. I like shampoo and conditioner bars as you can cut them down to the size you need, they don't leak and you can reduce plastic use. I talk about these more in my Pack Like a Minimalist Pro video here, which I'll also link to in the description below. I'll also link to all my favorite products that I mentioned in this video below. Makeup. Now, for the most part, you probably don't need any makeup, no matter which retreat you're going on, or you could go really light on makeup, but hey, 
you do you! A mat towel and or a hand towel. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to lug a heavy yoga mat halfway across the world, but still want some kind of barrier between you and a borrowed studio mat, because they can get gross, a mat towel could be handy. Here's a pro tip. If you're traveling for a longer time, mat towels also make great bath towels because they're light, they don't take up space, and they dry really fast. Any kind of product you can use for multiple things is a win in my book. Other props. Now, these could be anything from blocks, straps, or your yoga mat strap can also double up as a yoga strap, a blanket, or a shawl. Now, these are all the nice-to-haves because, to be honest, most yoga studios and retreat centers will have these, but if you're really particular like me, and I'll show you in a bit which ones I like, you might want to bring your favorite prop or props with you. Also, props are usually more of a thing for more meditative styles of yoga like yin, restorative, yoga nidra, where your body can really open up with more support. So if you're doing a more active, dynamic vinyasa flow or handstand retreat, you won't need a lot of these accoutrements. But if you're doing a more active, dynamic retreat, you may want to consider recovery tools like a foam roller, a massage gun, or a rolling ball. A tennis ball works too, to give your muscles a good self-massage. You could probably get a massage where you're going, but if you're on a budget, a tennis ball in your shoulders does wonders too. Books. Since you're on retreat, books might be a good idea. A Kindle stores thousands of books and they're great for traveling. If you're doing some kind of workshop or training, you might want to bring some of the reference books or training manuals recommended by your teacher trainer. In a nutshell, these are the main things you really want to consider, so let's put this all into practice and show you what this looks like for me as I pack for my five-day silent retreat. Now let's set the scene. This is a yin yoga and meditation retreat with the formidable Sarah and Tai Powers. I'm so excited as Sarah Powers is one of my yin yoga heroes. It'll be five days in the mountains of Italy at the beautiful Mandali Center in Piemonte, it'll be quite lush. But it's also going to be cold. It's already a low of 3 and a high of 8 degrees Celsius, so it's dead winter. And we'll be doing some vinyasa, but a lot of yin and meditation in silence, of course. I'm going to show you what an ultra-minimalist might bring, but then I'll also include some additional extras that I want to bring. So the stock standard either way will have a yoga mat with strap. I love the support of my manduka mats and will always bring one with me when I travel, retreat or not. I have a whole playlist of the various manduka mats I've reviewed with a discount code. If you're ordering from the UK or EU, I'll put the link below. Yoga clothes. I could probably do with just two sets each of a pair of leggings, sports bra and a top, but because I know we'll also have a vinyasa flow session every morning and I get really sweaty, I'm going to bring three sets. The mountains can get damp and I don't want to risk my clothes not drying in time if I'm only alternating between two sets every day. Warm layers. A jumper and a giant shawl blanket thing. This one is great because it can double up as a scarf, a meditation blanket or an additional warm layer. So that's the main stuff I'll have on the mat every day. And off the mat, I'll have two regular outfits consisting of two pairs of sweatpants and two long sleeve t-shirts. We'll have daily walking meditations and hiking is an option. So all of these can be layered on top of my yoga clothes with my winter jacket and beanie, of course. Then of course, five pairs of thick socks and underwear, the other must haves in this ultra minimal setup, my notebook, pen and journal, my swimsuit and flip-flops because sauna and steam room is a must, a water bottle, thermos, toiletries, makeup bag, and the two recommended books for this retreat. Also, this might not be necessary for you, but it is for me and my shoulder knots, my massage ball. This one doesn't take up much space anyway and is like a shrunken down foam roller. I'll link to it below. I'm also bringing one pair of boots. I'll just use these on the plane and I'll use these for hiking as well. Probably not the best, but hey, I don't plan on being super mega active on this particular retreat. So at the minimum, this is all I really need. But because I'm a little bit extra and also a bit of a germaphobe, I don't like using the props and blankets at yoga studios and retreats, so I bring my own. Two foam blocks and one curved foam block. And this one is especially helpful in backbends. These three blocks are the minimum I need for yin yoga. Since these blocks and my mat take up most of the space in my carry-on, this time I'm trying out compression cubes to help me squash down all the rest of my other clothes. I am not such a fan of packing cubes because 
While they're great for organizing your bag, they're not the best in terms of maximizing the space you have in the bag. But I'm trying out these compression packing cubes from Peak Design and Travel Dude. I'll link to both of these below. These are great because they also have a section behind to store your dirty clothes, separating them from the clean ones so you can also use it as a laundry bag. And there's an extra zip to compress everything inside to save space. Same product, multiple users. You're getting the hang of this one now. I'm planning a longer trip back to Asia at the end of this year, so I'm curious if I like these compression cubes enough to take them with me then. Do you use these? What are your favorites? And let me know in the comments below what packing cube tips you have for me. If this was helpful, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. And for more Minimalist Pro packing tips, you might want to check out this video here. And I'll see you in the next one.